Okay, let's stand. And before we get started, let's put a smile on our face, if you will, okay? It's good to see you all this morning. So glad you're with us. Join with us as we get started singing today. Aren't you glad of an empty grave this morning? 
All right, once again, we are so glad you're with us today. We're getting ready to sing, Blessed Be Your Name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And until then, for the next few moments, turn around and shake hands, fist pump, wave, do something, text, whatever. Smile at someone, let them know you're glad to see them this morning. First verse, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Isn't the Lord good to us? Amen. Now, you may not. Isn't the Lord good to us? Amen. Okay, I thought just he'd been better. He'd been, 
He's been gooder to just two and three of us, okay? You know, whenever we have a tough day or a tough week or anything like that, when things do not go the way we always want it to go, uh, no matter how we feel, we can still thank the Lord for all that he's done. Uh, if you're here this morning, I think most of you are here and breathing. Uh, God's been good to us. He's allowed us to have another day. So we want to thank the Lord for that. As the ushers are getting ready to come, we have a few announcements. Uh, Welsh College Ensemble will be here on Thursday, July the 7th. Okay, so we will not be having a Wednesday evening service that week. We will be having the uh, midweek service on Thursday that week. That's July the 7th. Now, this is what we're going to be doing. We need to feed them before they sing for us, before they minister to us. So we need, to, they ask that we feed them or provide supper for them at 5 o'clock. So what we have talked about, we talked about this past Wednesday evening. Uh, we are going to uh, order food in. And if you would like to eat, now, once again, they need to eat at 5 o'clock, so we will be eating. There's 10 of them. Uh, we'll need to eat at 5 o'clock. We'll be having chicken, barbecue, three sides, uh, hush puppies and drink. And uh, if you would like to eat with us, so we have a sign-up sheet on the uh, pew up front here. It will be $10 a person. We will work something out for the kids as well. If you say, well, preacher, I don't get off to 5. I can't be there to 530. Go ahead and come on. We have a microwave. You can warm it up, okay? Uh, so please help us out on this. Everyone is welcome to come and uh, partake in this. It's also good to have uh, Brother Reuben Kaysen and his wife with us this morning. We've been announcing Brother Reuben coming for a while. And uh, he is our North Carolina State Promotional Director of Free Will Baptist. So I trust you will be praying for him as he will be speaking for us in just a few moments. Also, uh, at the end of service, we will be taking up a special love offering for the North Carolina uh, State Promotional Office. So please keep this in mind. All right, before we have a prayer over our offering, our regular tithes and offering, we have a special guest. I think she's been with us once before, but uh, kind of had to go to the nursery for a little bit. Caitlin, you want to go ahead and introduce somebody for us? All right, congratulations. <laughs> and if everybody wants to turn around and take a picture of Rodney and Rebecca, you haven't seen them smile that much in a long time. <laughs> All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer, if you will, please. Brother David, would you lead us, please?
custom to the very end of the month to introduce a, a new song. So we kind of want to do that for you today. If you feel like singing along when we get to the chorus, feel free to do so. But um, this is our new song, What, is, what He's Done, and we're going to do it for, um, for pretty much all of July until we get to the very last thing. So we're, we're back to the song of the month. Thank you. We do want to praise your name for all that you have done for us. Thank you for being so good to us. As an individual, as families, as church, as a state, as a nation, Lord, we just pray that you will continue to guide us. Help us, dear Lord, to seek your will, seek your face in all that we do. Thank you for your word. Pray that you'll be with Brother Reuben as he comes in just a few moments to speak to us this morning. Father, may the Holy Spirit just continue to have complete control over each and everything that's said and done today. We love you. Thank you so much for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good song. Looking forward to, to hearing more of that. Also, 
Uh, Jared is right here. Some of y'all may have seen it on Facebook. Uh, Jared Skinner, our bass player here, he was at the Wood Ducks game on Thursday evening, and he played the national anthem solo, okay? Uh, so congratulations on that. And I did get his autograph Wednesday night after practice, so uh, uh, I got it before he become famous. So uh, we're so, so glad for that. Keep, uh, keep uh, uh, Jared, I said Jeremy, keep Jared in your, in your prayers. All right, Brother Ruben, it's good to have you with us. He's doing a tremendous job as our state promotional man of Free Will Baptist, and it's so go he's so glad to have him with us this morning, Brother Ruben. God bless you, Brother. God bless you. Appreciate you, Brother. Good morning. Good morning. It's indeed an honor for my wife, Terry. When I'm here, I have to really make a distinction between Terry and Terry because they spell it the same way. But it's a joy and an honor to be here today and I uh, do appreciate Brother Terry giving us this opportunity to come and uh, be with you in the service as promotional director of our state. One of the uh, joys that I have is traveling our state and visiting with our churches. And 99% uh, of the pastors give me the opportunity to uh, present the ministries of our state and preach. And uh, so I'm very grateful for uh, that opportunity and for the privilege of being here with you all in the service today. And uh, normally have a PowerPoint presentation. I apologize for not uh, having that. Uh, I like showing pictures. You know the old saying, a picture is worth? I saw the other day because of the inflation rate today, a picture is now only worth 200 words. But anyway... Some of you get that on the way to the car. But uh, uh, so I'll just sort of talk you through the presentation and let you use your imagination. Uh, but I am grateful to say, and I rejoice in these songs that we have uh, worshiped the Lord with today. That's been a blessing to my heart. And uh, to, to, to just say praise the Lord for what God is doing among Free Will Baptists, not only in uh, your local district association, but in our state and across the denomination, and I really encourage you to, uh, to listen and pay attention as things are mentioned throughout the course of your uh, services because you are plugged in uh, through the leadership of your pastor uh, what's going on across the denomination. I can promise you if you've not heard the Rejoice uh, ministry team from Welch, uh, I, I tell you, you're in for a treat. You're in for a blessing. So... Uh, you clear your calendar of everything else you got going on that day and be sure uh, to be here. And, of course, the chicken and barbecue, I mean, you come for that. Good night if you don't come for any, anyway. So, uh, uh, so it's a joy to be here. So uh, last time I was here, I think we were asking you to pray for a new mission work. And, uh, and I'm happy to announce to you today that God has answered that prayer. We have a brand new work that is going to be uh, planting a church in the western part of the state in Hickory, North Carolina. And uh, so we're excited about that. Now this is, how many of you have ever heard the phrase being a free will Baptist a long time? We ain't never done it that way before. You ever heard that? <laughs> well, I think they say that in all churches, to be quite honest with you. But um, uh, this is our first ever joint project with the National uh, home missions and the uh, state missions. And so we're mighty excited about that. Uh, the Lord's given us opportunity to send a missionary team uh, rather than a solo missionary like we've done in the past. So Brother Brandon Smith and his wife Shelly and their three boys are joining with Jonathan and Heather Huff and their three children. Uh, and they're going to be planting a church in Hickory, uh, North Carolina. So pray for them. I'm sure you'll have an opportunity to meet them. For those of you who don't already know, Heather uh, is our daughter, so we're mighty uh, thankful to the Lord for calling our family to be a part of this mission team and uh, do encourage you to pray for them. I always enjoy promoting our Women Act for Christ in our state because of their mission projects. Uh, they do a good job. There's some changes going on within the uh, the National uh, Women Act for Christ, Sister Ruth McDonald, is going to be our new uh, director, and she's scheduled to start this November. Uh, but we thank the Lord for what our Women Act for Christ do. Now, their mission projects for this year is the, uh, the Impact Ivory Coast. 
Some of you may remember Dr. La La Laverne Miley that went to the Ivory Coast years ago and was a medical missionary there. And so there's a hospital in Dorpo, Ivory Coast that is in need of some repairs and medical equipment. And our ladies are going to raise $10,000 to help with that. They always have a home mission project, so they've chosen Project Hickory for that this year. They'll raise 5000 And then they have uh, projects for uh, our colleges, Welch and Southeastern. Our young people are really involved in ministry. As a matter of fact, as I speak, E-Team is probably winding up. Many uh, students from North Carolina have been participating in that all around the world in different countries. Uh, Truth and Peace is going to get started up here in a few weeks. They'll be serving at the National Association. The Youth Evangelistic Team just got started uh, with their traveling this summer. CTS competition, I think we had 46 different categories from six different churches across our state uh, that competed uh, virtually again this summer. We're praying next year they'll be able to meet back in person. Uh, and so pray for, pray for them, and it's exciting to see them uh, continuing to be involved in ministry. And then we have the Leah Waddell Scholarship Fund that helps uh, students from North Carolina who attend uh, college at Welch. And uh, for the last three years, we've raised over $10,000 in scholarship money that is divided among students who apply for uh, the, uh, the scholarship. Plus, we've, our executive board has added uh, scholarship giving to Southeastern uh, over in Wendell uh, uh, along with that. And so we're very thankful. I believe God is still calling and using young people to, uh, to go to college and prepare for Christian ministry in and, and different fields, not just preaching and missionaries. We still need that. I'll mention that in just a second. Now, a lot of my responsibility as promotional director in our state uh, carries the title of being a pastor uh, to pastors. So while you may only see me occasionally, I stay in touch with this guy over here, Brother Terry, and uh, praying for him and his family. Thank God for their faithfulness. Thank God for their ministry. And I have not asked his permission to do what I'm fixing to do. I don't have to have his permission to do what I'm fixing to do. It's a part of my job. Uh, but I've been asking our churches to consider doing this for their pastor, and, uh, and I hope you'll understand why I'm doing this in just a minute. When our state began back in the 60s, uh, our, our fathers who founded our state work started a benevolent ministry. Now, this ministry was started to help a, a spouse whose um, husband or wife passed away, and, uh, and it's $25 per member. And so what, what it, how it works is when one of our pastors or pastor's wife passes away, that money is circulated through my office, and I write a check to the surviving spouse. We currently have 141 members, so you can do the math, 141 times 25. Now, for some of our pastors, I can tell you that that money has been a blessing to them at such a critical time. As a matter of fact, I said at our state meeting, we ought to call it a blessing ministry instead of a benevolent fund because now uh, things have changed and a lot of pastors do have life insurance and those kinds of things. But how many of you know when a time like that happens uh, that there are more needs that insurance does not cover? So this fund, the surviving spouse can take the money and uh, use it wherever it is needed. My goal is to get that up to 200 members. I don't know that we've ever had 200 members, uh, but, but we've lost a lot of our fund members lately. As a matter of fact, we've had six to pass away uh, within the last several months. And uh, a lot of our members, uh, churches, uh, provide this as a benefit for their pastors. Just $50 for Brother Terry and Sister Susan. Uh, so I'm going to leave this right here. I want one of the deacons Brother Terry, you can't touch it, but I want one of the deacons to come by and pick that up. And I'll just ask you as a church to consider that for uh, your pastor. But in moving forward in the future, whoever your pastor may be, to consider that uh, as a benefit to them. I would encourage you to continue to pray for our state. Another thing that I do is serve as an liaison, as it were, between churches and pastors without pastors. Church, we currently have 11 churches in our state uh, that do not have a pastor. Some of them have been looking over 
two years. Now, this is not only a need in our state, but across our denomination in Free Will Baptists, in our nation, but in other denominations in our world. Uh, this, is a, this is a need. Uh, we have over 210 churches across the Free Will Baptist denomination who do not have a pastor in the pulpit today. And so as I travel, I share that burden. I'm not sure if I did this the last time that I was here, but I've started challenging our people to set an alarm every day at 10.02. Why 10.02? Because I want us to be reminded of Luke chapter 10 and verse number 2 which says, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into the harvest. So every day, Monday through Friday, I have an alarm on my phone that goes off. Sometimes I'm in a restaurant when it goes off. Sometimes I'm uh, in a store. Sometimes I'm at home. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes this thing will start ringing and I'm working and I have to pause. Oh, what's that noise? Why, why is that going off? And when I see my phone, 10.02, I pause and I pray, Luke chapter, because folks, I believe with all of my heart that is the answer. That is the key to meeting this need, praying for the Lord of the harvest to send forth labors into his harvest. So I, uh, I want to invite you to join with me in praying 1002. Now, if AM's too early for you, you can pray at 1002 p.m. Say amen right there. All right, you're still with us. So we also put out a weekly witness, to, uh, which is a, a newsletter email. We link that to our Facebook page, uh, and we would encourage you to follow us. So we try to put a lot of information about our state, about our Free Will Baptist denomination in that newsletter, what's happening. And so I would encourage you to, uh, to like that page on Facebook and get that newsletter. And I want to thank you for your support. Brother Terry mentioned the offering at the end of the service, and that's how my office is supported, through the, uh, the offerings of churches. And uh, we greatly appreciate that, and we so much desire your prayers. And I want you to know we pray for you. Uh, every week, I have all of our churches and pastors on a prayer list. And, uh, and as I cycle through that, I'm constantly praying for our churches, praying for our pastors and their families and their ministries. So I want to uh, remind you that we're praying for you and we desire that you pray uh, for us. Thank you for this opportunity to be here. On your way out, if you'll go through this doors, these are the best riding pens in North Carolina. And at our state meeting, I was told they're the best looking pens. And so just outside the door here is a little basket. Uh, if you'll pick yourself up a pen when you leave, uh, I'd appreciate that. There's also a banner. I had this thought hit me just a little while ago. There's a banner outside the door here that lists all of our ministries. Uh, you might take your phone and snap a picture of that. And uh, when you see that picture, you can be reminded to pray for us. I don't know about you, but I have to have reminders. I like things to remind me. Take your Bibles this morning and go with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. Now, I've known your pastor and his family for a very long time. And they've been here a very long time, but I bet I know something about them that you don't know. Brother Terry stole a can of peaches one time. And as he was before the judge... At the sentencing, the judge said, I'm going to give you three days per peach. How many peaches were in the can? Now, to Brother Terry's advantage, these happen to be those big old peaches, you know, where there wasn't but a few in there. So there were three peaches in the can Brother Terry stole. So the judge was going to sentence him to three days in jail. Sister Susan was at the hearing, and she said, Your Honor, he also stole a can of peas. <laughs> Put him away for a few days. <laughs> that did not happen. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. How many of you know laughter doeth good like a medicine? Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, if you're willing and able, let's honor God's Word this morning as we stand to read His Word. If you're unable, that is fine. But I want to begin reading in verse number 9. We'll read through verse number 16. Uh, the 
core of my passage of Scripture this morning is, is going to be uh, verses 9 through 12. Uh, but I want to share with you some things the Lord's been doing in my heart uh, from this passage of Scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But... He that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And may the Lord add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. You may be seated. I wonder if we were to take a poll this morning. When I read verse 9... How many of you have heard that passage of Scripture before and talking about heaven? Well, as I began to study this passage of Scripture, and interestingly enough, that particular verse is what drew me uh, to this passage of Scripture and studying this. And I began to realize I've heard that, referencing heaven. Well, our eye hasn't seen and our ear hadn't heard what God has prepared for us in, in the wild blue yonder. But that does, it's not referring to heaven at all. As a matter of fact, there are so many verses of Scripture that are used as quotations that have been robbed of their context that doesn't mean what we think it means and say it means. For an example, bless the Lord. We got a small crowd here today, but where two or three are gathered, He promised to be in the midst of. That doesn't have anything to do with church attendance. It has everything to do with getting along with one another. And Matthew 18, dealing with church conflict. And so there's a lot of passages of Scripture. As a matter of fact, I was was real humored by what J. Vernon McGee said in his commentary. He said, this verse surely has been misunderstood. It has gone to a a funeral too many times. (laughs) It doesn't have anything to do with heaven. What it does have to do with is wisdom. It has to deal with the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're going to deal with this morning. And I've given this the title, Ray Preacher titled this, How We Know What We Know. I was reading the Randall House commentary and Dr. Piccarelli said, verse 10a, and I want you to read that, look in your scripture, verse 10a, but God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. And in case you need to know, that is a capital S, and he is referring to the Holy Spirit of God, the third person of the Godhead, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Here's what Dr. Piccarelli said. Verse 10a must be read quickly after verse 9. So we would read it quickly, as Dr. Pick really suggests. But as it, as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. 
Dr. Picker really went on to say, while natural man has not discovered these things, they have been revealed to us. This corrects a common misuse of verse 9 as though it refers to future things God has in store for us that we do not even know. And he said this, and I put it in bold letters in my notes, Paul is not speaking about things we do not know, but about things we do know. Things we do know. By the way, as I was reading verse number 9, I thought about Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. It too is a familiar passage of Scripture, but it has been robbed of its context. And we know that all things work together for good. To who? To them that love Him. To them who have been called according to His purpose. But you've got to include verse 29 with verse number 28 because if you don't, none of it is going to make any sense. The reason these things are happening so that we might be predestined to be conformed to His image. My friend, I say to you on the authority of the Word of God without stutter, without stammer this morning, the reason things happen to us, the reason we go through things, the reason we experience things is that we might be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, that we might be more like Him. That is the goal. That is the, that, that is the plan for every believer. And oh, I believe I'll chase a rabbit right here and preach a little bit. But the modern day Christian has the idea that if I'm a Christian, I'll have a perfect life. I'll have a pleasing life. I won't have to bear any pain. I won't have to go through any problems. I'll have this. I'll have that. Everything. No, you may have some of those blessings of life. But the purpose of it all is that we might be conformed to the image of Christ. Christians will suffer. I'll say it again. I'm preaching better than you're amen. And Christians do suffer. We do go through pain. We do go through heartache. We bury loved ones way too early. I mean, listen, we, we hurt. We suffer. But, but, but we, we don't have to do this without knowledge, without help. Whew. We have somebody as believers inside of us. And that person inside of us is the Holy Spirit of God. And Paul said, <laughs> uh, listen, here's how we know what we know. He's not speaking about things we do not know, but about things we do know. So I want to give you three quick things. Number one, the revealing by the Spirit, the researching by the Spirit, and then we'll just highlight for, for a brief few moments the receiving of the Spirit. Look at 10a. As Dr. Peek said, got to be read quickly after verse 9. We don't want to miss the meaning of what he is talking about here. Uh, verse 10 a but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit now there are mysteries there are deep things and the Bible talks about deep things in the verses of scripture we read just a moment ago but the revealing of the spirit is simply this the Holy Spirit is is the one who does the revealing of divine truth to mankind. I'm glad to be able to stand in a pulpit in the United States of America and declare to you that this book that I hold in my hand is the Word of God. This is truth. In a day uh, where so many people are messed up and misinformed and, and mixed up in their theology and their doctrine and what, what, what well, preacher, what, what, what do I need to know? Get in the book. That's what this precious man does week in and week out as he leads you through the doctrines of Scripture. Now, he is a man. I'm a man. I'm just a, a vehicle. I'm just a vessel. I don't have truth to give you. This is the truth. 
This is what we're preaching. This is what we're declaring. The songs we sang about a moment ago is truth, is declaring divine truth through the Sunday school lessons, through the Bible studies, through devotions. It is the Holy Spirit that is revealing to us divine truth. How many of you have ever been sitting where you're sitting this morning and you're listening to somebody preach or teach and something dawns on you? Has it ever occurred to you that nothing has ever dawned on God? He knows it all. That's why we use the theological term, He is omniscient. He knows everything. There is absolutely nothing that God does not know. And He is the one through His Spirit that reveals to us divine truth. I like what John Philip said in his commentary on this passage of Scripture. He said, Unto us, not the rulers and reasoners of this world, He has revealed to us the great truths set before us in the Bible. Now, my precious wife is here today so she can give you testimony to this. I struggle with listening to the news. Oh, boy, how I struggle listening to it. I need to be informed. Uh, I, you know how I got word about Roe v. Wade being overturned? I didn't see it on Fox News that morning. I was in a meeting with a bunch of preachers on Zoom. And one of them said, let's thank the Lord for the decision And I'm sitting there lost as a ball in tall weeds. What is he talking about? (laughs) Oh, really? And so, boy, I couldn't hardly wait to get through the meeting to check out some news about it and was rejoicing and was praying and all of that. But, But here's the point I'm trying to make. What I really need every single solitary day of my life, I need to be informed about what's going on around me so that I can be salt and light. But what I really need is not what the rulers and the regulators of this world can give me. I need this because this is divine truth. And I don't know about you, but I'm just so naive to believe that when God gave us this book, when he wrote it through holy men back eons of years ago, that he gave us then what we would need June 25th of 2022. This is the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals this divine truth unto us. That's why we must guard the truth. And if you can't guard it, if you don't know it. The revealing of the Spirit. Let's let's look at the last part of verse number 10 and verse 11. We see the researching by the Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but by the Spirit of God. If verse 9 and verse 10a present the facts, then verse 10b and verse 11 present the logic behind those conclusions. Do you hear what I said? If verse 9 and verse 10a present the facts, verse 10b, verse 11 present the logic Behind those conclusions. Now, it, it takes a... I mean, I wonder about a lot of things. And the older I get, the worse it gets. How do things work? I don't, I don't want to just be amazed at how things work. There's a part of me that I want to know how it works. Now, now two, two things real quickly. And I, I won't bore you with, with my persnickety ways. But it's interesting to me how soap works. Some of you sitting there thinking, what in the world is interesting about that? I mean, it is how your hands can be all dirty and you just get a little bit of soap and a little bit of water and it all washes away. Another thing that interests me is why do all cockroaches die with their feet in there? <laughs> I don't get the logic behind that. I've never seen a dead roach with his feet on the ground. <laughs> Uh, somebody's going to explain that to me one of these days. But here's the, the point. 
The point is that only the Spirit of God is qualified to reveal, to reveal the things of God. Listen, it's only the Holy Spirit of God that can reveal the truth of God's Word to us and give us the logic behind the conclusions. Verse 11 is an interesting verse. I'll not take a lot of time to expound upon it, but let's read it again. For what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? In other words, we would say we put voice to feeling. You cannot know really what I'm thinking just by looking at me. If you're married, say amen right there. <laughs> My wife knows that I have a habit of sometimes asking while we're rolling the miles down the road in those quiet moments, well, what are you thinking? How many times have she said, nothing? And I learned through the ministry of Dr. Adrian Rogers that that's impossible to think nothing. You're thinking something. Oh, you may not want to talk about it. And see, that's more of an honest answer than to say nothing because you are thinking about something, even if it's just wondering why cockroaches die with their legs up in the air. You're thinking about something. <laughs> so, so only the spirit of man, and now in your Bibles, that is a little s. That's not referring to the Holy Spirit. It is only the spirit of man that... Listen, the only person who really knows you is you. Now, Brother Terry, Brother Terry knows me, but Sister Terry knows me. But I'm really the only one who knows me. She's really the only one who knows her. He's really the only one who knows him. That's what verse 11 is saying. So he says, For what man knoweth the things of the spirit of man, uh, things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but, and here's the capital S, but the spirit of God. Paul illustrated this point illustrated this by pointing out that nobody can fully fathom the thoughts of anyone else. How much more necessary then is the work of the Spirit if the thoughts of God are to be known? Now, I'm not going to take a lot of time here, but I do want to mention thirdly and finally the receiving of the Spirit. The receiving of the Spirit. Let's look first of all at the definition of this receiving because he uses the word received in verse number 12. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world but the Spirit which is of God that we might freely know the things that are freely given to us of God. He says as Christians... We did not receive the spirit of the world, that is the Greek word cosmos, the world order, but we have received the spirit of God. And I'm here to tell you this morning on the authority of the word of God without stutter, stutter without stammer, without apology, that every person who has received Jesus Christ as their Savior at that moment instantaneously received the Holy Spirit. It is not a second work of grace. It does not come later. It does not come as you grow and as you mature. When you confess faith in Christ, when you were saved, you received the Holy Spirit. You received the person of the Holy Spirit. I like what Warren Wiersbe said. He said, our salvation involves all three persons in the Godhead. You cannot be saved apart from the Father's electing grace, the Son's loving sacrifice, or the Spirit's ministry of conviction and regeneration. But let's notice, secondly, the design in the receiving in the latter part of the verse, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Piccarelli says, this, that... <laughs> Clause certainly seems to be a statement of present result and not merely a future purpose. And I wrote this down. Receiving Christ as Savior results in the Holy Spirit entering the believer, which brings the blessed result of illumination of divine truth. We have received the Holy Spirit. Now, just going to mention this briefly, but I want to give you two things about the Holy Spirit. 
In verse 13, we see that the Holy Spirit teaches. And in verse 14, we see, 14 through 16, we see that the Spirit matures the believer. Look at verse 13. Which things also we speak. By the way, that in and of itself is a very interesting phrase because we have the Word of God because the Spirit of God moved on holy men, listen very carefully, who wrote down words. I was introduced to that song several years ago, Ancient Words Ever True. These words are ancient words. They're ever true. They were written down. They were given to us in words under the inspiration. So in a beautiful way, you can look at this whole passage of Scripture. There is divine revelation. There is divine inspiration. Then there is divine illumination to shine the light on, if you will. It is the Holy Spirit that teaches Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And this verse of Scripture came to my mind in John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I said unto you. And I wrote this down. Make time every day to read the Word of God and meditate on the Word of God because the study and application of basic Bible doctrine can transform your life. I'm not a Gideon, but I have pastored several Gideons in my ministry. I love the Gideon stories. The reason I do is because they illustrate the power of divine truth that can penetrate the hardest heart and bring that soul to regeneration, bring that soul to salvation, and there not be a preacher within 10 yards of him. My favorite all-time Gideon story is about the Gideon who passed out that New Testament, that Gideon New Testament, and somebody threw it in the trash can. Some old drunk comes by, and he's looking a thin piece of paper to roll up his tobacco so he can smoke his joint or smoke his tobacco. And he's rummaging through the trash, sees that Gideon New Testament. How many of you know Bible paper's thin? So he tore a piece of that Bible out and started to roll up his tobacco when at that moment the divine spirit of the living God fell fresh on him and his eyes fell on that paper, that black ink on white paper and the spirit of the living God touched that man's heart. He read that one page of scripture that he tore out of the Bible and was gloriously saved. And my friend, if the Holy Spirit will do that for a drunk passing by getting a Bible out of a trash can, what do you think he would do with you and with me sitting on our living room couch reading the Word of God? That's why it's important to make time every day to read the Word of God and meditate on it. Now, in verses 14 through 16, won't take the time to read all those verses again, but in verse 14, the contrast is between the saved person and the lost person. He talks about the natural man. That is the unsaved man. He talks about the spiritual man. That's that's the, the person who's been saved. In verses 15 through 16, the maturing Christian grows in his spiritual discernment and develops the ability with the Spirit's help to understand more and more of the will and mind of God. I'm glad to be able to tell you this morning, here's how we know what we know. (laughs) Eye hath not seen, ear has not heard, the things that the Holy Spirit of God has revealed to, and the only way you're going to know what you need to know is through illumination, is through the Holy Spirit. I was sort of done in a relatively way of speaking, studying. Preacher Terry knows you're never done studying. Sometimes we study more after we preach it than we do before we preach it because it, well, anyway, you wouldn't understand all that. But... um, But I had my message sort of prepared and I was rereading my notes and then I I was glancing over some commentaries laid out on my screen 
I read something Warren Wiersbe closed this section of his commentary with, and I didn't really pay it attention to first reading through. By the way, that's why we need to read things again, especially as men. Women say. <laughs> Let, this is interesting. The Corinthian Christians were so wrapped up in the miraculous gifts of the Spirit that they were neglecting the basic ministry of the Spirit. <laughs> Here's what helped me to understand that. Because when I first read it, I went back and read it again. The Corinthian Christians. I mean, just take any study Bible Take any study Bible and read the introduction to Corinth. You think we live in an evil place? You ever heard the phrase, you ain't seen nothing yet? An evil, wicked society. problem with the Corinthian church, and you see this laid out beautifully as Paul introduces his letter in chapter 1 and chapter 2, is that the Corinthian church wasn't influencing Corinth. The city of Corinth was influencing the church. One commentator put it this way, they could not get human philosophy out of their system. Human reasoning, human philosophy. Now, friend, I'm going to tell you, the world has a philosophy. The world has a system of belief. And a lot of times that infiltrates the lives of believers. Maybe you've heard it this way, put in preaching in years gone by. It's okay for the boat to be in the water, but when the water starts coming into the boat, you've got problems. And that's the whole idea. The Corinthian Christians, don't get so wrapped up in, the, in the, the miraculous gift of the Spirit. The, don't neglect the basic ministry of the Spirit. And I can give you some real quickly. Did you know the Bible says that we're to be filled with the Spirit? Do you know that means that I'm to be controlled in my temperament? I'm to be controlled in my walk, in my talk, in my life. Everything about my life is to be under the Spirit's control. My thinking, I love verse 16. I preached on that last week. We have the mind of Christ. We can think Christ's thoughts after Him. And you're not going to know what Jesus is thinking apart from reading His words. I, I, I'm to be, I pray this prayer every day. I try to pray this prayer every day. I want to be filled with the Spirit. I want to walk in the Spirit because the Bible says in Galatians that in order not to fulfill the lust of the flesh, I'm to walk in the Spirit. I'm not to quench the Spirit. I'm not to grieve the Spirit. I would say the quenching, the filling, the walking, uh, 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 all of those are, are the basic ministries of the Holy Spirit. And that, my friend, is how we know what we know. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I want to ask you to quietly and reverently stand to your feet. I'm going to ask Brother Terry to come and lead you in a hymn of invitation. Close the service as you're accustomed to. But friend, I want to ask you this morning, are you allowing the Holy Spirit to shape you, to mold you, to speak to your heart His wisdom, His truth, His teaching, His guidance, His direction for your daily life. You see, a lot of times people have this argument, well, I don't read and study the Bible because I don't understand it. My friend, that's a lame excuse because what I've just delivered to you takes that excuse away because the Holy Spirit is in you and He is the divine teacher of divine truth. You just got to be obedient to read it. He'll give you the understanding when it's time. 
You may be like me. You might not understand it the first time you read it, but oh, when you read it again, a little light bulb comes on in your head. That's the working of the Holy Spirit. What about being filled with the Spirit? What about walking in the Spirit? What about talking in the Spirit? What about quenching the Spirit? What about grieving the Spirit? Are you living a life as a believer, realizing the ministry of the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom, to give you divine illumination of truth? Father, as best I could this morning, I've shared what you've laid on my heart. Lord, it's been a challenge to me to study, but it's, it's really been a challenge today speaking to my own heart as I'm the one delivering it. God, I so much want to be filled with the Spirit to walk in your truth, to know your truth. And Lord, the very first step is for a person to receive the Spirit. If a man have not the Spirit of God in him, he's not born again. He's not a Christian. He cannot know these things apart from the Spirit of truth. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity today. I pray as Brother Terry comes to lead us in this invitation at the close of this service, that your Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us and meet needs in our life. In Jesus' name I pray. As we sing this morning, if God's speaking to you, maybe, you know, here, you know we say so often, if God's speaking to you about making your way to this altar and praying, it's praying to God. Maybe something that you're facing this week you want to ask his guidance on maybe it's just a prayer of praise I don't mean just a prayer maybe it's a prayer of praise that thanking God for what he's done whatever it is if God's speaking to you this morning will you come as we sing all to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will Father, once again, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done. And Father, I pray that you would bless continually. I pray that you would use these words that Brother Ruman has spoken to us, preached to us this morning. Lord, just guide us in a very special way. We love you. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, I'm going to ask you to be seated for just a moment, if you will, please, as the ushers go ahead and... Okay, you can stand up if you want to. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, as the ushers prepare to come, we'll receive uh, this offering. This offering goes straight to uh, the North Carolina Association of Free Will Baptists. And uh, after the offering, uh, we'll have a, a song of dismissal. But we appreciate you being with us. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for those that have joined us online. And by the way, if you have made a decision online, please let us know. Uh, so we might be able to help you, pray with you, and do all we can to help you out. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we pray once again. Father, you've been so good to us. Thank you for your blessings. Pray that you'll be this offering. May it be used for your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And uh, by the way, while the offering is being taken, uh, Brother Reuben, I do have an answer about the cockroaches. Okay. Uh, when They know when they're getting, you know, when they're walking, and they've been sprayed or whatever, they have trouble breathing. And they feel, somehow they feel like when they go on their back that they might be able to breathe easier, but that actually suffocates them. So if you believe that, I've got ocean property in Arizona that would be glad to sell you. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> All right, let's stand once again, if you will, please. What I see, I see lightning, I hear thunder, something stirring six feet under, dead things coming back to life again, I 
believe there's about to be another resurrection I see signs and I see wonders I see bursts of living color Dead things coming back to life again about to be another resurrection. Come alive, wake up, sleeper. He is risen. We are risen with him. about to be another resurrection. Come alive, wake up sleeper, he is risen, we are risen with him. If you see what I see, that the grave is empty, then you know what I know. Anything is possible. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Yeah.